Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we are going to be finishing off Allen Bradley M4 M drive where we're going to be looking into how to set the drive with multi-frequency setup and also be checking out carrying carrier frequency. So uh, if you have missed the last two videos with the commissioning and 2-3 uh, wire control, those both videos are going to be uh, in the description below and also any related videos and manuals and everything else that I think would benefit you in any possible way they are going to be in the description below so without further ado let's get started <music> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The multi frequency station has been wired in and it will uh, look uh, like a so. We will have a run button, which uh, all the uh, multi frequencies will require to run. And we have a uh, uh, speed one, speed two, and speed uh, three. There is uh, quite a bit to talk about this, so uh, we're going to crack on straight away. Uh, the system we're going to be using is it's in, um, in a parameter group A. So you can see down here it says program 4, 10, 11, 12, 13. This is where you pretty much will preset your speeds and this gives you sort of a graph in here. What sort of bits needs to be closed for that certain speeds to change and acceleration speed, uh, 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 not acceleration, the multi speed uh, acceleration and the acceleration times are in select a set in acceleration to the acceleration two. That is in, we're just going to get that in a minute, in A group, as you can see in here, this is where you would select your speed, uh, set up your speed. But in uh, acceleration time will be in uh, four. Uh, let's give that uh, A four hundred one, and A four hundred two will be your deacceleration. So make sure that you use those for your uh, multi when you are setting up multi frequency setup. But another thing I want to talk about in here, which you can see down here, it says in here uh, if the terminal uh, five and terminal six is zero. The frequency is going to be a set uh, read from a 410 a410 that is in the case if if you are in a, a p108 which is your speed referencing which is where you select your speed referencing as you can see if that is selected to two now sorry if that is selected to four you will read of the frequency from a410 but if that is selected to a, uh, if uh, a speed referencing is selected to two, I shall show you what happens if that is the case. So it will not be reading the frequency from a uh, a four hundred ten. It will be trying to and looking for it read frequency from potentiometer. So uh, if we are, if you if you go in here and see, I already oop, I already have. Uh, set up my uh, 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 speed in uh, A410 uh, at 26 hertz. So uh, we just can memorize that number. So if we oh, if we go back to a group A P, select that and go in there. Oh, and that one change that one to two. And we're going to start the first demonstration from this point. We're gonna, first, we're going to show you the actual cabling as well. So then we're going to enter it. And then we're going to escape it. So we're going to leave that one at the moment for that purpose. So when it comes down to wiring, it's a little bit of a interesting one. So the wiring wise, we have our, uh, the terminal 11 coming obviously here, going through our e-stop and then a e-stop returning back to a terminal one, which is our stop thingy. So it's going to work as our e-stop. From then on, it sends on the power to all the switches. So you can see we've got, we've got quite a few. The reason we got quite a few because these are all normal open contact, so we need to have a run button. So if it, for this drive, you can't reprogram the run forward and run reverse. So that option is still there if you want some sort of selection to go for uh, for the drive to go forward or reverse. We are going to be only using forward signal, so that goes to, to a terminal. Uh, uh, what is that terminal? Terminal two. So from there on, uh, we are, as you can see, we, the terminal three will stay empty. And for the selection of the speeds, we can use an A5 and a six. So basically the speed one is gonna be five, speed two is gonna be a six. But if you see, remember, I'll show you in a graph in a minute, um, uh, just before, the speed three requires uh, the terminal five and terminal six to be closed. And that's exactly what we have created in here. We ended edited two signals, two contacts in here. So both of these can be pushed down 
and they're all returning back to uh, as you can see this one returns back to a um, four and that one returns back to a uh, five so once they're selected so both of those switches will close off and will activate speed three so this is sort of a bit a selection system in there but we can have actually four speeds if we wish to so that's pretty much how the wiring would go and only terminals we are using in here is a uh, two uh, five and a six so uh, let me put the cover on and i'll show you quickly how that runs with the with the potentiometer and how that runs without it so here we go ladies and gentlemen the first we are going to be running the speed reference set to two so this is what the station looks like as you can see now if i put in a run mode the drive is going because it's reading the frequency now from a potentiometer in here so and if we are to, uh, to select speed it will automatically quickly override that speed uh, the, the the potentiometer and it will jump to preset frequency and as you can see then it, if you turn up it goes straight back to the potentiometer and then you can go for a uh, speed uh, two and then you can turn it off and then you can go for speed uh, three and as you can see this one doesn't do anything unless i release any of the selections of the speed so that how you uh, option one how you can a uh, control it but in many cases people don't like it like that so i usually leave my run button uh, for the uh, at the zero so i can uh, pre-select my speed but it's depending how you want so uh so now if we want that fourth preset speed so all we need to do we need to go and select and the p108 select enter and change that one to four and it will solely change the parameters make sure that they only reach from digital inputs and no longer from a uh, potentiometer so uh, and how that works now as you remember the the first uh, select is uh, suppose oops, first speed that we have uh, selected it uh well edited in frequency was something like 28 so uh, something like 20 what it is so as you can see 26. so now our run button has got frequency and that frequency can be a preset and potentiometer no longer will be read so uh, the, 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 the A410 will only work if this uh, uh, A uh, and the P108 is changed to 4 so bear that in mind so see if you if it's, so you need that run button to be able to go for those speeds so it's a speed uh, uh, frequency speed 1 speed 2 and speed 3 so here we go so and then you return to distance so here we go and that's how uh, you can set up your uh, multi uh, multi frequency station so and obviously the respectively if you go to a uh, a uh, 4010 and onwards so you can see uh, oop. so this is where your speed one will be this is where your speed two will be and this is where your speed uh, three will be next uh, as we have a look at the, uh, uh, the state multi frequency station, the nice thing uh, quickly, as we have a bit of time for this video, I will show you what is carrier frequency. So, what is a carrier frequency? So, uh, Alan Bradley is called a, a PWM frequency, but uh, in a short, in, a, in, a, in a, most places, or most drives actually, they are called a carrier frequency. And they actually, in description, they are actually calling it a carrier frequency. It's an output waveform that is the, that is the built by uh, switches that are inside the drive that determines uh, how uh, well that form is, uh, that uh, waveform has been uh, formed. This, uh, and that parameter is in A446. And you're probably gonna be asking, oh, why do I care about that? That very much, is it 446, is that very much determines the noise of your motor. So the lower the carrier frequency, which is uh, this guy in here in 446, the louder will be your uh, drive. By default, the, the carrier frequency on this drive is at four hertz, and I have set that to eight, and hence that's why you are hearing this drive so fair, um, more or less quiet. The higher the frequency, the harder the switching has to work. So uh, obviously, uh, by thermodynamics, the harder anything anybody works, 
or anything works, uh, the more heat is being generated. So, uh, the, so that's something to look out for when you are adjusting your carrier frequency. But generally, all the drives are very good at managing their carrier frequencies themselves. If you are putting the carrier frequency high and that drive is heating up in some ways, it will uh, reduce that carrier frequency automatically just to compensate for that heat. And as soon as the heat goes down, it goes a little, let it go back up. So, but by the, if you want to set up and have a nice but uh, uh, quiet drive, you would go up and, uh, but, and if you were, if the drive, if, if obviously if you don't care for it, then you can go down, which uh, obviously uh, the, uh, the little switches inside will work slower. So I'll show you what happened. What happens? The two is the minimum. So here we go. We're going to select a two carrier frequency at two uh, kilohertz. So uh, that's the frequency. And let's have a look how uh, fast, how what kind of noise we are getting from this kind of carrier frequency. So here we go. We put in run mode. As you can see, noise is terrible. But by the end of the day, it is better for the switches. So. It is, it is sort of a giveaway, so uh, so the switches works less, so it prolongs the drive's life, and so on and so on. So, and then, uh, as you change it, so as you change it, uh, this is, I'll uh, show you quickly, this world. By the default, you are at four, which is more or less all right. I would, uh, this is what Marlon Bradley thinks we should stay on, but in case you don't, so you can adjust it. So pretty much, just to give you an idea what the carrier frequency is, and if we try it again, so that will be the deadly noise at carrier frequency at four kilohertz. So I'm hoping that you're getting a gist what carrier frequency is and that it is for you to play with. So, uh, and it's sort of, a, hopefully you understand what that does. So that will be it, ladies and gentlemen. That way it's uh, for the multi-frequency setup and a brief explanation of what carrier frequency does. And uh, it is there for you to play with and every drive has it. So uh, some drives actually have carrier frequencies really high. Some drives have it really low. So this one guys, this one got like in a lower part as default. So uh, if you want to change it and uh, have a nice quiet uh, motor in your garage or whatever you are in your uh, factory, or things like that, that option there is for you to do. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and that will conclude this uh, uh, PowerFlex M4. We have another drive coming up, which will be a PowerFlex 525, I think, which is going to be in the next upcoming video. So uh, Thank you very much for watching and if you liked the video please don't smash that like and comment below with all the questions and I'll answer them as soon as I can and as best as I can. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.